Ibrahim Olufemi Gajabia Mila. God bless you all. A warm welcome to House Tickets, a weekly legislative program that educates you on the workings of the legislature with focus on the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. My name is Dihelia Mamza. It's good to be with you again. In our lineup today, we have reports from the committee room featuring the House Committee on Basic Education and Service, as well as the House Committee on Health Services, both of which held public hearings on bills seeking for establishment of various institutions. We will also bring some matters of urgent public importance, motions alongside bills at their various stages that the House treated before it recessed. That report sums up our package for this week. Please stay tuned as the program returns fully in a moment. Join us again. The entire purpose of the legislative agenda is to direct our legislative resources and efforts in a coordinated effort to ensure the well-being of the individual in a life of safety and freedom. That is a high ambition, but it's well worth the effort. We have passed landmark legislation to fix our oil and gas industry, reform the police, and reorganize the corporate administration system in our country. We have considered and passed meaningful legislation that impacts all areas of our national life. We will start the program fully with reports from plenary proceedings for the week before it recessed as we review matters brought up by lawmakers on issues around the society for legislative discussions and resolutions. Motions on security, conversion and diversion of monies by staff of NNPCL, amongst other matters, are highlights from our next report. Keep watching. <laughs> arise to bring a matter of urgent public importance. On Thursday, the 6th of April, 2023, Representative Remande Shaulu moved a motion on the urgent need for security forces to halt the continuous killing of residents of Takum in Taraba State. Several electoral wards, such as Fikyu, Pambokuri in Usa local government areas have come under heavy attack with heavy casualties, usually women and children without provocation. Aware also that Usa local government area, since the withdrawal of special forces in 2020, does not have the presence of soldiers or mobile police force detachment to respond to attacks, which have become very frequent, leading to the closure of all schools in the local government for almost one year. He called on the house too mandate the Chief of Defense Staff to deploy special forces to the region and the Inspector General of Police should deploy adequate mobile police officers to the region as well as further called on the National Emergency Management Agency to provide relief to the people of the region, especially as the rains have begun. The motion was voted on and adopted. Mr. Speaker, I want to move a motion still on matters of urgent public importance Representative Hafiz Kau moved a motion on the conversion and diversion of about 20 billion naira by the staff of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited (NNPCL) in the guise of paying consultancy fees. Informed that the staff of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation are reported to have diverted the sum of 20 billion naira in guise of consultancy fees paid into its consultant Mesa Sapphire. Further informed that the said over 20 billion naira diverted by the staff of NMPC is part of the monies meant for the payment of taxes to state government in Nigeria by the corporation. Concerned that in a time when the federal government is doing its best to fight corruption, enhance resources for the development of national infrastructure, staff of an agency of government ought to be prudent in the utility of state resources, not to corruptly divert same. The lawmaker in his prayer called for an urgent investigation into the matter and that the House should be briefed on the outcome as a matter of urgency. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against the motion was voted on and adopted. The House then set up an ad hoc committee to investigate the matter to be chaired by Representative Kingsley Chinda. 
The committee is expected to turn in its report on or before three weeks. The ad hoc committee will be chaired by Honorable Kingsley Chinda. Members are Honorable Rurum, Honorable Olanre Waju, Honorable Bio, Alkali, Honorable Maki, Honorable Kau, Honorable Amos Mogaji, and uh, Osbi. I stand today to move a motion on the need. Away from motions on the matters of urgent public importance to motions on the other paper. The House considered a motion on the need to strengthen the Nigerian creative industry, sponsored by Representative Shina Pella. That as the country seeks to diversify its economy from, depend from dependency of oil revenues, the creative industry based on its current economic value provides a veritable incremental source of employment, revenue and growth. Also note that the United Nations suggests that the creative industry is a driver of employment, economic growth, innovation, and social cohesion. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I'm aware that available data tend to support this view. In the studies that covered 11 creative industry sectors across five regions of the world. And Some Peter, lawmakers contributed to the motion. It's interesting to know that Chinese in Lagos, reap most of the works of creative industries who typewrite uh, the CDs and all whatnot now. And um, the manner of collecting royalties and so on is so porous. For us to understand this some more, just like we did the environmental summit, can we, the relevant committee, my amendment is that to mandate the relevant committee to have the first ever legislative creative industry summit, to understand them better, and to make the necessary laws that will open up our environment, our creative environment, for more investments to come in. And those in favor, please say aye. The motion was voted on and adopted as amended. The House, in its resolutions, urged the federal government of Nigeria to urgently implement policies that will enhance the capacity of our creative industries as a major revenue earners. It also urged the Minister of Information and Culture as a matter of priority to create and execute policies to strengthen the creative industry. The House further urged the Federal Government of Nigeria and the National Assembly to increase the budgetary allocation to the Ministry of Information and Culture in the 2024 budget estimate for optimal performance. In another motion, Representative Abdul Kadir Rahis brought up the need to provide special intervention for victims of fire disasters at Monday and Gamboru markets in Maiduguri. The recurrent fire disasters in Maiduguri, most notably at Monday market on 25th February 2023 and at Gamboru market on 18th March 2023, which completely raised down the Maiduguri Monday market, while a large portion of the Gamboru market was also burned down though resulting in the destruction of goods and properties worth billions of naira. Aware that the popular Monday market is the major hub for trading and business, not only in the Northeast region, but also serve the neighboring countries in the region. While the Gamburu market serves as a major lifeline for most residents of Maiduguri, especially for food items, worried that the unfortunate incidents have brought serious setbacks to the victims of the fire incidents and also millions of residents who patronize the markets to transact business, hence the need for strategic intervention to bring succor to the victims. The resolution taken on the motion was to urge the Federal Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Northeast Development Commission and the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, SMEDAM to provide immediate and long-term interventions to the traders and victims of the markets to aid in recouping their losses. An amendment was proposed to include the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, as an agency to help with relief. The House further resolved to send a delegation to commiserate with the victims and the government of Borno State. Nice. The House during the week under review considered and passed several bills at second reading, among which was a bill for an act to domesticate new partnership for Africa's development framework and establish the African Union Development Agency to give effect to its provisions in the Federal Republic of Nigeria and for related matters. It was sponsored by Representative Gideon Gweni.
and Representative Dachung Musa Bagos. This bill seeks to establish the African Union Development Agency. Uh, this bill is an offshoot of the new Partnership for African Development. The bill seeks to give effects to its provision in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, the entirety of this bill is geared towards the fulfillment of the Agenda 2063 of the Partnership for African Development, which is NEPAD. This particular issue. Lawmakers debated the bill. There's, there's some kind of ambiguity, sir, in which I want clarity in the sense that we are talking of two things at a time. A B for an act to domesticate new partnership for African development framework and established. That's two things at a time. There are two bills uh, looking at the merit possibly of the treaty and for the implementation, member is certain for an establishment of energy that will handle that. And I think that's nothing bad. I will give you an example of the SDG today we are all benefiting. It is out of international treaty that we got that one. But we have to establish an agency that is responsible for that and we are benefiting and the country is benefiting. You will discover at a time when our former president, President Obasan, just started this move. Mr. Speaker, Nigeria owes about 80% of the, the funding of this particular issue. And when I investigated it, I also invited uh, most of the part of people who are involved in this issue, which I lay before this Honorable House. Mr. Speaker, I urge every member of this uh, Honorable House to give effect to this provision. The dual responsibility of this bill of domesticating the treaty and at the same time, giving effect to it to a, through an agency is sufficiently enabled that where we contribute 80% of the establishment of the F4 Manawas and funding in establishment of this treaty, that we should, through the agency, make sure that we play a prime role. That was a summary of matters of urgent public importance, motions as well as bills taken at various stages of consideration by the House in the week on the review. We will take a break here, but when we return, a report on the engagement of the Standing Committee on Basic Education and Services, where it held a one-day public hearing on a bill on educating the Almajuri child. Do stay tuned. The House Committee on Basic Education and Services held a one-day public hearing on a bill for an act to establish National Commission for Almajiri Education and Out-of-School Children to provide for a multimodal system of education to tackle the menace of illiteracy, develop skill acquisition and entrepreneurship programs, prevent youth poverty, delinquency and destitution in Nigeria, and for related matters. This was on Tuesday, 28th of March, 2023. Representing the Speaker, Femi Bajabiamila, at the public hearing was the Deputy Leader of the House, Rep. Peter Patterson. In his presentation, the Speaker said that when the House resumed after the election season, they had assured Nigerians that the Ninth House will continue with the people's work with dedication until the last day in office. This public hearing speaks to our intention to live up to that assurance. It also speaks to our commitment to do everything within our powers to change the landscape of public education in Nigeria, emphasizing access and quality for all. I have said before, and I reiterate this morning, that education is the silver bullet that goes to the heart of most of our nation's challenges. In the 21st century, education ensures that our people can thrive in the knowledge economy, participate and benefit from you know, technology advances 
that define this age. The speaker added that no child born in Nigeria in this day should be denied access to quality education, noting that unfortunately so many young people had not had the opportunity to reach their highest aspirations through quality education. Whether this is due to lack of resources, the result of cultural reservations, or the effect of public policy failures, there is no better time than now to do whatever that we can to change this reality. That is the intent of the bill we have come here to review this morning. Speaking earlier at the hearing was the chairman of the committee, Rep. Julius Inyonveri. While making his presentation, he stated that the critical challenges which the bill seeks to address represents in large measures dislocation in governance, incomplete use of power, and at the same time failure of leadership in the country. We may not like to hear it, but that is the exact truth. If you look at areas where we expend a lot of money and show no results, and you think of how much is required and the necessary political will to deal with the emergency situation or deal with the out-of-school children's situation, you will realize that we've always placed a very sick old horse behind the cart, not even in front of it. Some stakeholders present at the hearing include representatives of the Center for Democratic Development Research and Training, Zaria, National Teachers Institute, Kaduna, National Growth for Arabic and Islamic Studies, Grassroots Mobilizers for Better Nigeria Initiative, Federation of Muslim Women Association, Youth Parliamentary Forum, Ulamas, as well as eminent personalities across all faiths, they made their submissions at the hearing. I remember that any effort that you put will pay. Yes, there are other parent statutes that have been created, but are they also utilized properly? No elected official wants to wait to four years before he can say, this is what I have achieved. They are more interested in the legacy that they will leave behind. So a lot of these invisible issues, which are just as important as the infrastructure, slip through the cracks. And this accounts for some of the disparities that we see. I always want to leverage on this opportunity to remind our brothers and sisters in the Christian faith that you have no other friends better than us, the Muslims, in this planet. And the earlier, the better we understand our differences, we recognize the differences, and we work together for the common benefit of all the better for us. I am here to advocate the fact that if we do not spend our resources on all Nigerian children, we will not solve this problem. No child left behind. No child left behind. The chairman of the committee, Rep. Julius Ihonveri, commended stakeholders after their submissions and assured them that the committee will look into the documents submitted and that the bill will see the light of the day. This conversation here today tells me very clearly that Nigerians want this country to make progress. They want to address these issues of out-of-school children. The out-of-school children are all over the country. It's not just in one part. I hereby move for the adjournment of this public hearing, Sinodai. The program is House Tickets, coming to you on the parliamentary channel of the NTA. We just brought you the engagement of the House Committee on Basic Education and Services. Coming up shortly is a report of the House Committee on Health Services, where it also held a one-day public hearing on a bill to establish traditional complementary and alternative medicine council in Nigeria. Let's get the details in our next report. Keep watching. The one-day public hearing was on a bill for an act to provide for the establishment of traditional complementary and alternative medicine council of Nigeria and for related matters. To me, it's Chairman of the Committee on Health Services, Rep. Yusuf Tanko Sununu, in his remarks, said that the public hearing is an important day for paradigm shift, where various medical practitioners as well as stakeholders in the health sector will make their voices heard. He, however, frowned at the Federal Ministry of Health for failing to participate at the hearing. This should have been 
sincerely and strictly speaking, to be an executive being. But if a member can think that, look, we need to widen the sources of our health care input to the country, the Ministry of Health should be here to say, no, it's going to harm the system. Yes, it's going to add value to the system. So we just consider it that we have no uh, clerk. We have asked for correspondence from stakeholders. Has the ministry forwarded any correspondence to you? The First Lady, Mrs. Aisha Buari, was represented by the Senior Special Assistant to Mr. President, Mohamed Sani Zoro. While delivering his speech, Mohamed Zoro said that the First Lady's personal interest in traditional complementary and alternative medicine practice is a passion and that for her, the public hearing on the matter was long overdue. Most Honorable Chairman, it goes without saying that based on what we have witnessed as the practice in so many countries in Africa, in Asia and all parts of the world, there is no doubt that this aspect, this very sector, is the one that is most accessed by the ordinary people. And therefore, majority of Nigeria's population access this type of medicine much more than the orthodox medicine. Secondly, most honorable chairman, distinguished members, it is also the most affordable. Given the poverty rate prevailing in so many parts of the developing world, you will agree with me that our mothers, grandmothers, sisters, brothers, and the general population in the rural areas who form the majority of Nigeria's population can only afford, most of them can only afford this medicine that has been so bequeathed to our generations by our ancestors. Stakeholders made their submissions I mean, on the bill. But looking through the, um, the bill, we can see that there are some areas of overlap with NAFDAQ because NAFDAQ has its own mandate. And NAFDAQ's mandate is actually to regulate and control the importation, exportation, manufacture, you know, um, advertisements, use, distribution, use of drugs and other regulated products. We are appealing are requesting for this bill to move because if the proposal bill shall be given a consider and approve, it will bring a lot of development to our nation. We believe the time is right for regulating the practice of African traditional medicine, uh, which is the appropriate name instead of traditional complementary and alternative medicine. However, NMA regrettably reject this bill as drafted due to the ambiguous nomenclature used at the time, and also that the bill contradicts the already existing uh, law. Other key stakeholders present at the hearing are representatives of the Ogun State's government, Association of Integrated Medicine Practitioners, Joint Health Sector Union, Medical Practitioners of Orthodox Medicine, Nigerian Union of Practitioners of Complementary and Alternative Medicine, key stakeholders and practitioners in the health sector, as well as traditional rulers. Time to say goodbye on House Ticket for today. Here is hoping you've been brought up to date on recent events of the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. For more from the House, let's meet again next week on the Parliamentary Channel of the NTA. Many thanks for watching.